On the breakfast, stakeholders in the aviation industry have called on the federal government to prioritize refining of Jet A1 to steam the increase of price of the product. Also on the breakfast, how has the Super Eagles fared under the head coach Joseo Peserio and what becomes of the 78th annual General Assembly elections of the NFF? We'll be joined by sports journalists. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspaper and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning and it feels really great to be here on your screen and it's good to know that you have actually joined us. We ask that you stay with us from now until 9 o'clock. It promises to be an amazing time with great conversation and wonderful perspective from our uh, analysts who are already on standby to join the conversation. Now, usually how we set off the show on, uh, you know, this time, or at this time, is that we start off with our top trending. But just before then, I am Messi Bokwo. Now, top on the top trending is that uh, a veteran, Mr. Ibu, has joined the obedient rally in Jaws, or joined the obedient rally in Jaws. And that was one conversation that made the round yesterday. Ibu is a, 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 a veteran Nollywood actor and was yesterday uh, making the rounds. It was uh, topping the charts, if you looked at it, he was at that spot because he was spotted at the rally of uh, Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obin Joss. And Ibu's appearance at the rally sparked that reaction, like I said. He's, very, he's a comic actor. And some celebrities had in 2021 met with the APC presidential candidate, that's uh, Bola Tunubu. And so, uh, people yesterday when they saw the video of him that made it, of course, uh, those who were around probably would have filmed it and then he made it to Twitter. Now, uh, even the, the presidential flag bearer of the Labour Party himself, there was a video where he was actually surprised when he saw him, you know, he, he was surprised. Now, the boss there is that, oh really, that um, Ibu, Mr. Ibu had actually, you know, gone to endorse the APC presidential candidate and now he's here uh, with the Labour Party. What do you expect? I mean, it feels like it's one and the same thing that happens with our politicians. One minute you can find, they're not permanent enemies, right? They're not per permanent enemies, uh, permanent friends, but you just have permanent interests at the end of the end. So it's what's really playing out with the elect, those who are actually vying for political positions. So you want to talk about the el the elites right there. And so uh, um, not surprising because it can't be anything. But how do we explain all of this? Because most times you find out these actors are actually influencers. And so they're actually paid to influence whatever it is that they're influencing. Money is involved. Does it really mean that um, that's an endorsement. The fact that they have a meeting they've been called to and they say, oh, you're an influencer. We're actually going to pay you uh, this X, Z amount of money to do X, Y, Z. I don't know if that's the case with Ibu, but however, people have reacted differently because at once upon a time, they saw I, I, uh, Mr. Ibu, who's an actor who attended, with other actors, by the way, he ha attended uh, a certain a meeting a conference and that felt like you know there was some sort of endorsement of uh, the flag bearer of the APC now he's with the Labour Party or he was seen uh, at the campaign ground uh, with the Labour Party what does this tell us I really don't know but some people say oh well, he's lying he's not lying but like I would always say they are no permanent friends they are no permanent uh, enemies and you just have interest interest would always be constant it's a very popular saying especially when we talk about politics Away from that, a presidential candidate yesterday signed a peace pact. And peace pact is a tradition that started, uh, you know, some time ago. It's just that those players who are going to, I mean, just as you get closer to the elections, it's expected that these key players come together and sign an agreement that, you know, as the campaign kicks off and every other thing, the campaign is expected to be issue-based and not uh, utterances and whatever it is, slogans, activities of 
uh, the campaigners or the politicians or those who are supporting would actually be violence free and that was what happened yesterday but however it became another issue for uh, a conversation it became a topic it became uh, a sensation in different spaces not just on twitter but even off twitter because the presidential candidate of the all progressive congress bola tunubu was absent and we already know that there's been a lot that's going on with uh you know the apc and some say that the presidential candidate is not even on ground because he had to you know leave the country for medical reasons probably health reasons and he might be in the hospital being attended to so of course if he hasn't been around all the while inauguration of the campaign council and what have you uh it wasn't really expected that he should be actually around but he was represented by his uh vice or his uh run running mate, that's uh, Shatima Kashima. At it. And so that's also another one. But very outstanding with all of the uh, reactions that came out is one from uh, Shore. He, he really was very vocal. I mean, there's also another video right there where he was talking about uh, how can you have a presidential candidate not being present at, you know, critical, uh, very, very important. Because, you know, it could happen that sometime you wake up and say, I wasn't there, I didn't sign it. It was my vice that signed, so it's not me. And what have you, I would not agree to whatever the outcome will be. And I mean, that's just on the side. Uh, but so this got a lot of Nigerians talking and one person, like I mentioned, that was vocalist Shore, where he was very, very, I mean, he, he sounded too passionate about it. And it almost looked like he was pained, you know, when he said, how can you not have, uh, you know, Bola Matinubu present? We can't have someone who's saying you're vying for the office of the president and you are in an absentia. This is like a kickoff. This is like the game is about to start and you are not, you're nowhere to be found. But um, apart from the fact that uh, Peter, um, I beg your pardon, that Bola Amatunubu was not present, you had the likes of Atiku of uh, the People's Democratic Party, that's the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Peter Albi of the Labour Party, and Rabi Yukwankwaso of the New Nigerian People's Party, among others. But let's also come back to, you know, let's talk about the content or the essence of the peace accord. Uh, it's okay to say that those who were supposed to be around, that's one of the one issue that was talked about. But another issue that was also of concern is that if you talk about the peace accord, it's, it's more like in the peace agreement, a peace pact that you all come together that were committed to ensuring that these elections are free of violence and, you know, we're sure that it would be conducted with the law and whatever the outcome is, we will all accept it. But with that, the National Human Rights Commission in 2015 had reported that a total of 61 incidents of election violence had happened. That was in 22 states, according to that report. I mean, at least uh, 58 people were killed in different parts of the uh, six geopolitical zones uh, of the country. So um, the big question here is, do you think that the peace pact has any impact on our elections because every other time uh, you see people signing the peace pact but the elections are not still void or entirely free of violence or and all of the rancor and alterances that are not of uh, you know they're not uh, they're not uh, commendable of a democratic process and so I know that from 2015, there's been a lot of improvement of that, but let's see how it pans out for 2023. Whether or not we're going to have a violence-free election is dependent on, you know, the players, the stakeholders, uh, those who are vying for the offices and the supporters. These are the issues. Another interesting one, very saddening, at a time where revenue becomes a big issue. Revenue has always been an issue, you know, for the Nigerian polity. It's that... Um, the Nigerian Railway says it's it's lost about 531 million naira over a terrorist attack. Uh, that's what the management of the Nigerian Railway Corporation uh, said. You know, it was more like they were lamenting. In the past five months, uh, they have actually lost that sum. 531 million as estimated in terms of ticket revenue on the Abuja Kaduna standard, uh, you know, train service or uh, what have you and uh, don't forget that you know uh, there was an attack 
that happened uh, prior to this time. Uh, there was suspension, you know, activities uh, on that particular route has actually slowed down. But what do we expect? And that's why security is almost everything. Because if you live in a society, if you live in a country where security is a big issue where government will say, hey, we're going to have different infrastructures. Because if you look at it, of recent times, it feels like these um, terrorists, these persons have been very deliberate about government or public uh, properties. And so the attack is very deliberate. And so they go ahead to vandalize all of this or attack public, uh, you know, infrastructure. And that's not good because at the end of the day, the government is actually losing out. So if a government comes into power, if you are a government and say, hey, you're here and then I'm, I'm going to have different infrastructure. Are you thinking about uh, the security of this infrastructure? If we cannot secure the society or the country entirely, then what becomes of all of the lofty projects, you know, aspirations, all of the plans that you have? So public projects, uh, public infrastructure, if you want to say, and facilities are also uh, at risk. And that's a lot of money that's going out there because money, you actually invested, you know, to have that constructed. At the end of the day, it doesn't leave its purpose. And, you know, we're losing cash. We're losing money, if you want to say. And that's a lot. So it's important that government uh, pay attention to the issue of security because it is government's responsibility to ensure that lives and properties are protected. That's been enshrined in our constitution. And that cannot be taken away. So secure the entire country, secure the state, and public infrastructure would also be protected. Apart from that, it's also, you know, the issue of security, like would always say, it's not... Uh, is every man's business because those who perpetrate this crime and those who commit all of this, uh, you know, uh, atrocities are not just spirits. They don't fall from the sky. They live with us. They are our brothers, our sisters, our uncles, our fathers. I mean, they are our neighbors. We know these persons, and that's why uh, the fight against insecurity is a collective responsibility. So I'm hoping that moving forward as a country, especially where you know we're looking at becoming 62, you know, just in there or thereabout, in just in a few more hours, uh, Nigeria become you know 62 right there. This should be top on our list, a priority for every stakeholder, for every Nigerian, including the government. And that's it on our top trending. We'll take a break now, and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us. <laughs>